The following video is part of my Data Center Interconnects webinar. To learn more about my webinars, please visit my website. This is, for example, what Microsoft is doing in their high availability cluster. You have multiple servers, they are bundled together in a cluster, and then you define services to run on that cluster. In Microsoft's approach, it's an active standby configuration. So a service is running on one host, and if that host fails, the service is restarted on another host. How do you figure out that a host has failed? Well, they ping each other or whatever they do over the network, or you could do disk locking, or you could have a file, shared file system and you do file locking. And then some people get a weird idea that, you know, we should have the same cluster across two data centers. Because then if one data center fails, all the applications will be automatically restarted in the second data center. So we will have high availability. The clusters usually share the same IP address between their members. For example, your SQL server should always be reachable on the same IP address, which means that whichever physical server runs the SQL server has to have that IP address, which yet again means that you need layer two connectivity between the cluster members. They all have to be in the same subnet so that they could share IP addresses. This would be a typical design. So each server would have two LAN links, one would be the public interface, the other one would be a private interface for intra-cluster connectivity, and then of course you need some distributed storage so that if let's say Outlook server that was running on this physical host lands on this physical host, they, it still has access to the same data. And as I said, services can run on any node in the cluster. And usually, we need layer to interconnect for IP address redundancy. Carlos sent me a nice message saying, this is not strictly so. You may have a slash 32 route. In an ideal world, where the server and operating system people would actually know what networking is, that would be the case. It was the case in the good old days of Unix mini computers and IBM mainframes because those hosts were running OSPF and they were actually advertising slash 32 routes. Today, no one is running the routing protocol on the host anymore and everyone is telling you that you should do bridging for IP address mobility, unfortunately. What happens if you have a stretched cluster like this? Number one, you could get suboptimal traffic flows because traffic would go like this and then to this side and then out here, in which case it would probably fail because of the firewalls, so it might have to go out this way and so on. What is a cluster split? The idea of the cluster is that all the hosts know what the other hosts are doing and they restart services after one of the hosts fails. However, you might get in a situation where a host really gets isolated from the network. So it's not it hasn't failed, it's just unreachable. In that case, that host could panic and start all the services that everyone else should be running. And the other hosts would start the services that were running on this host. And if you would still have access to the storage, you would have a total disaster. To prevent that, all cluster solutions have so-called cluster quorum which means that you have to be in the, after the split, you have to be in the bigger part of the cluster. If you're not, then you shut down. Which means that after the DCI link fails, 
and the cluster nodes figure out that they have a problem, they, they have lost quorum, half of the cluster nodes here on the right hand side, for example, will shut down. So just because you've lost the interconnect link for a few seconds or maybe a minute, depends on what your timers are, you could lose half of the servers in the cluster. And because you've lost those servers, you've also lost all the services they were running. So all those services have to be restarted on the left-hand side. Remember, they're not moved over, they are restarted. Which means, for example, for a database server, that it has to go and reprocess all the transaction logs, which is not done in seconds. It could be done in minutes. And of course, as with layer three data center interconnect, you could have potential black holes. But the worst problem is that the link in the middle fails, you lose half of the servers, you lose all the services they were running. To get more information about my webinars, to register for an online session, buy a recording or a yearly subscription, please visit my website.